Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. Today I'm asking, how powerful does your PC actually need to be for a really good VR experience? Now I would hate for people not to be playing VR because they didn't think their PC was up to it when really it was absolutely up to the job. Or similarly, to have their expectations smashed when they went out and bought a pre-built gaming PC and it just couldn't do the job. So today we're gonna to talk through, you know, what does your PC actually need? Now I considered showing you a load of benchmarks because I've recently upgraded some specs and I've been running a lot of benchmarks myself. But I'm not really about that life and I thought, you know what, we'll have a one-to-one -one conversation, we'll just talk it through and we'll get to, you know, the end point. What is the balance of a perfectly built PC for VR gaming? Now the most important part of any PC for gaming, whether that's VR or just standard flat panel gaming, is always your graphics card, or your GPU. Now for the majority of time that I've been playing VR recently, I've been doing it using this card, which is a... 5700 XT. Now that's a mid-range card but perfectly capable and it's served me really really well. I've recently upgraded something a bit more powerful, well a lot more powerful, but I thought you know where is the balance point and what is the most important thing that you need to be looking at. So what experience did I have with the 5700 XT? Now if we start with native VR games, so that's games that have been created specifically for VR, they're actually really easy to run. Now the reason for that is VR is quite a small market, so they, there isn't an enormous amount of players that the developers can target. So they wouldn't want to limit that any further by making their games way too hard to run, so that, you know, of that small amount of people, only an even smaller amount of people could actually do it because their specs are up to it. So they tend to make the games, you know, pretty easy, so that it can run on a wide range of hardware, regardless of which, you know, headset you're using. Now for me, I've been mainly using the Quest 2 and the HP Reverb G2. They're both quite high resolution headsets, but I've had a really, really good experience with them. And I would say with the 5700 XT, pretty much every native VR game has run well for me. There's always some that are poorly optimized or badly made and will struggle on you know, any real hardware. But I've had a pretty good experience, even with titles that give you a warning about how hard they're gonna to be to play. For example, Medal of Honor. Medal of Honor warns you, you know, if you haven't got a 2080 Super or higher, maybe this isn't right for you. For me, it ran really, really well. I didn't always get a perfectly maxed out frame rate, but the experience was smooth and really, really good. I've got no complaints whatsoever. I had a lot of success with pretty much every game I played, including the real top tier VR games, such as Half-Life Alyx. Now, when I played Half-Life Alyx, when I launched the game, I would get the odd little warning saying, your, your VRAM might not be enough and your, your game might struggle. I don't think this was actually the case. I think the game looks at VRAM allocation rather than VRAM usage. So the 5700 XT has eight gigs and um, I rarely saw it reach that eight gigs when the game was actually playing. And the frame rate was always really strong. I ran it at um, full settings and it was always close to the sort of 90 Hertz that the G2 can put out and similar experience on the Quest 2. The games that are a bit more challenging are flat panel games that have been, you know, re-rendered into VR. So I'm talking the likes of sim racing games like Automobile Easter 2, one of my favourites. That's quite a demanding game to run. Now I was able to run it quite well on the G2, but nowhere near maxed out specs. I had to dial back the textures. I wasn't quite getting the perfect um, refresh rate. I was usually getting somewhere between sort of 60 and 70, depending on the course I was racing. But it was an okay experience and it really got me through. Other, other sims like Seto Corsa Competizione was quite hard to run. I had a manageable experience, but you know, nowhere near perfect on that. And um, standard Seto Corsa was all right for me. And games like Star Wars Squadrons ran really well. Again, I did dial back the settings just to make sure I got a perfectly smooth frame rate. So I, I wouldn't have the textures at completely max. I'd have them at um, sort of medium, but really, really good. No complaints whatsoever. Now there are a couple of outliers that were very hard to run. Um, the standout for me being Microsoft Flight Simulator. I did find it just about playable, but it'd be real low frame rates. You'd be talking about sort of 30 to 40 hertz. Now that might sound incredibly low, but Microsoft Flight Simulator is a very slow game. It's not like an FPS where you're moving your head really quickly, seeing all different things. It's um, a real slow experience. So the, the frame rate wasn't a massive issue for that game. Now when you get into dense cities where it's doing a lot of calculations I did find that frame rate drop right down and you'd have the odd stutter and things like that. So it, it very much wasn't a perfect experience in that game and um, if I'm honest I didn't spend a massive amount of time in it for that reason. So recently I've upgraded my card and I've gone to right to the top of the deck. So my card is now an RTX 3090. 
That is the most powerful consumer graphics card on the market for gaming. It's what Nvidia called the BF GPU, and the F does not stand for friendly. It's really, really good card, but it's expensive, and it is overkill. If I'm honest, I didn't even really want that card. I spent five months actively hunting for a 3080, which is about half the price of that card. And I just couldn't get one. I couldn't get one anywhere. And the prices I was seeing them go for second hand were massive. Now, when I came to buy the 3090 that's in the PC over my shoulder now, I actually got it for a better price than I could find any 3080. So that's the reason I've got one. I wouldn't advise you run out and get a 3090. There are plenty of other cars that are ideal for this situation. So what improvements have I seen to my gaming since I upgraded to the 3090? Like I said, VR native games were pretty much perfect for me anyway. So all the improvements came from flat games that have been rendered into VR. The sim racing shot up. So I can now you know, max out all the specs and get my 90 hertz refresh rate on the G2 and you know, max FPS on the Quest 2 as well. Really, really good experience. There are actually still the odd track that doesn't get to that. So my favorite track on Automobilista 2 is um, Donington. That's just down the road from me. And it does struggle to get 90 hertz on that. I think that's because there's no buildings around you. So you can see for a long way. So there's lots of draw distance. Um, that could just be me guessing. But it's not quite there. But in general, the experience is pretty perfect. And I'm very, very happy with it. Now, there are still some games that don't manage it. So when I jumped to Microsoft Flight Simulator that was struggling on the 5700 XT, it's a better experience, but not by a million miles. So it actually still doesn't get anywhere near that top um, hertz. I'm, I'm sitting around the sort of 50 to 60 mark. Now it feels really smooth and really playable, but it's nowhere near perfect. That is a really demanding game. So never go into that thinking, you know, I've got this max, I've spent a lot on a PC, this should really be able to deliver it. It's a tough game and you've got to set your expectation for that. Now the advantage of a 3090 is that it has 24 gigabytes of VRAM. So like I said, my 5700 XT had eight. The likes of a um, 2080 Ti has 11, 3080 has 10, 3090, 24. Now people will tell you that VR is where that is gonna be utilized because VR you know, has to render lots, lots of textures and um, it's gonna really make use of that VRAM. Now, as it stands today, that isn't necessarily the case. There really isn't many games that are taking advantage of it. Unless you're running a headset like the Pimax 8KX that is you know, running at 8K resolutions and really utilizing those textures, I don't think you need anywhere near that much VRAM. I'm not gonna complain about having it, and I hope in the future there might be the option for games to turn those settings up and really take advantage of it. But as it stands, I haven't really found any use cases in gaming that massively take advantage of it. So what should you buy? So let's say you're specking out a computer or you're looking at pre-builts and thinking, oh, do these specs match what I'm looking for? Well, I would say your graphics card's the most important thing to look at and consider that first. If I was buying now, I would say the bare minimum expectation I would be sort of happy with to run VR would be something like a, a 2060. If you can find it, I'd be looking for current gen. So something like a 3070 upwards would be pretty fantastic for VR. I think a 3080 is kind of the peak for what you could want or need in the current market. I have heard anecdotal success of people running things like 1660 Ti's and getting good VR experiences. I've not done it personally, but um, I have heard this that might be something you can consider. But if you've got the money, I would just prioritize your GPU and get the best you can afford. Maybe spend a little bit less on your other components to make up for it because that is where you'll get the most gains. So the second most important spec of your PC is your CPU. Now I've got a 3800X in my PC. I've had that in there for about, about 18 months now. Really, really reliable. I've had a fantastic experience with it. That's quite a high core count CPU. That's, that's eight cores and 16 threads. I know people that run VR very, very well using the likes of a, a 2600 or a 3600. So if I was specking out a PC, I'd be thinking of that as a sort of minimum expectation. I probably would avoid um, second, second gen Ryzen like the 2600 now, I think we've moved on a little bit from that. So I would consider a 3600 as sort of, sort of base point. Friend of mine recently upgraded from a 3600 to a 5600, that's the, the newest gen of Ryzen CPU. And he saw some pretty phenomenal gains in VR. He actually found sim racing jumped right up. He said a Seto Corsa saw a massive, massive improvement. So that might be something to bear in mind. Now the prices of the newest gen compared to previous gen Ryzen isn't massively different. So if you're looking new, I probably would start with that 5600. That'd be a really, really good chip for you. 
So next up, RAM. And that's a pretty simple story. So it's similar to pretty much any other gaming case. At the minute, 16 gigabytes is just about the sort of sweet spot. Eight gigs would get you by, but there would be some games that overtax it and would struggle. And 32 is kind of overkill. I've got 32 in my PC, but I do a lot of video editing, things like that that take advantage of it. And um, just wanted to remove any possible bottlenecks from my PC. Um, but I think 16 is pretty much ideal. I would go for a reasonably fast speed. So sort of 3200 up would be really, really good for you there. And you can get that relatively affordable. So for me, I went for performance over sort of looks and things like that. So I've got no RGB or anything on my on my RAM. Just got sort of plain HyperX um, RAM. But, um, but it, it serves me really well. 32 gigs of reasonable speed. So um, yeah, if I was you, I'd be aiming around the sort of 16 mark. And then your other components, I would just match them to what you've got there. So just make sure your power supply is enough to um, supply your graphics card. Get some storage and any SSD will do you. I run a couple of N.2s, but you know, any real form of SSD nowadays is, is pretty good to get you by and just get a, get a case that fits your components and a motherboard that matches the chipset that you've gone for for your CPU. All pretty simple and lots of help on the internet there to sort of help fit you there. So that's about it from me. Now I'm happy to help you out. If you've got any questions or anything, feel free to leave them below and I'll um, see if I can find some time to answer them. Um, similarly, if you think I've missed anything or if you disagree with anything I've said, please do leave a comment below. I think the VR community is really good at helping each other and we you know, want to welcome new people on board. So it'd be great to sort of help anyone out who's not sure about this kind of thing or just have a bit of an open conversation. So please do feel free. Anyway, that's it from me. Please do us a favour, before you go away, don't forget to press that like button. It really helps me out. It convinces YouTube that I'm a bit better at this than I actually am. And make sure you're subscribed. I've got some really cool stuff coming up and I'd love you to catch it. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much. Goodbye.